What's up, guys? Rick from DFS On Demand here with week four of the NFL season. Remember, these previews are available in video format on YouTube, in audio format, um, in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you can get your podcast. So uh, do me a favor, subscribe, and that's the only thing I'll ask you to do. So let's not waste any more time. It's week four. We're starting to gather enough information to make some larger assumptions about teams and players. Um, as we do every week, I'll go position by position here, go through the tools that I've created on, on DFSOnDemand.com and just kind of chat this out. So let's start with the quarterbacks. And, and quite honestly, this is a bit of a first look for me too. I'm kind of going in a little bit dark here. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can get some, some raw feedback. So as far as quarterbacks go, I think there's a couple of things that jump off the off the board. I think there's a few really good values that everyone is going to be aware of. Someone like Andy Dalton or Baker Mayfield, who we'll talk about in a second. But then Carson, I'm sorry, Drew Brees is actually my fourth highest projected value of the week. Now, why that's so interesting is he's also the third most expensive quarterback on the Millie Maker slate. So it's rare to get a quarterback so highly priced as one of the best values. So why is Drew Brees a value this week? Well, uh, let's take a peek here. Uh, a 50-point total assigned to this game in Vegas against the New York Giants. They are only three-and-a-half-point favorites. Now, they are on the road, um, so they don't get to play in the friendly confines of the Dome in New Orleans, but... They have one of the highest implied team totals on the board. And it's the closest game of any of those teams. So if you look at the teams that are projected to score more points, this three and a half point spread is the highest one. Could this turn into a little bit of a shootout? Well, I have concerns that Eli Manning could participate in a shootout, but Vegas seems to think that that's a possibility. So you get Drew Brees at a pretty decent price for what he has been able to, to do this season. Which, just to remind you, is this. 34 DraftKings points in week one, 17 in week two, and then a big game with 43 last week. Now, I think he did rush for... Let's see, he rushed for two touchdowns last week, which is certainly not going to happen um, with any consistency. But good to see him throw it 49 times, nearly 300... I'm sorry, nearly 400 yards. So he has now thrown it... 45 times and 49 times in two of the first three weeks. This um, the Saints defense is not good, okay? I was a believer in them before the season started. Should not have been. They are not good. They're going to give up a lot of points, and we're going to have to see that Drew Brees of old, where last year they just kind of pounded the ball on the ground. Not going to happen this year. Brees is going to be chucking it all over the yard. While we're here, let's look at some of these bad defenses against quarterbacks, right? So New Orleans, the worst defense against quarterbacks, as we kind of mentioned earlier, um, have been shredded by everybody. Now they get Eli Manning and the Giants this week. Uh, I do not suspect Eli Manning is going to put up 45 DraftKings points like we've seen basically uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Matt Ryan do against the Saints this, this year. But uh, hey, could be a very good game for him. Pittsburgh, unfortunately, is not on the main slate. They're playing the Sunday night game. Uh, Kansas City playing the Monday night game. So they're kind of off the off the main slate as well. And then you get uh, Tampa Bay, who's allowed a ton of points. They're going up against Mitchell Trubisky. So you're not getting a lot of like really drool-inducing matchups and scenarios until you get down to the San Francisco LA game, the Chargers, that is, because they play each other. Okay, now this is where things start to get interesting. So San Francisco has allowed Kirk Cousins, Matt Stafford, and then Patrick Mahomes to all kind of put up significant value on their defense. And now it's Phillip Rivers week. So Phillip Rivers, let's see what I can find here. Phillip Rivers has been uh, trending down a little bit since his big week one. So I'll show you where he's at here real quick. As I punch this in, and you can see 33 points in week one, and it's been a downward trend since, but it feels like this is the week to buy back in on Phillip Rivers which with a still manageable $6,500 price tag. And here's what I like about Phillip Rivers. Um, I'm headed over to the production shares tool, and I'm just going to point this out. 
Melvin Gordon has the fourth most targets for running backs this year. So it is not a situation where, you know, it's exclusive where only the running back or the quarterback is going to score you points. Um, the running back in this situation, Melvin Gordon, is not going to vulture a lot of those points away from Phillip Rivers. They can both coexist together. I love quarterbacks in that type of situation. Um, so I'm, I'm much more comfortable to play Phillip Rivers because of not only his skill set, not only the matchup, not only that, you know, he can get hot and throw it 50 times, um, but the fact that he's going to throw it to everybody, okay? They're not, they're going to, they're going to use Melvin Gordon in situations where instead of just turning around and handing him the ball, that's valuable for quarterbacks as well. Don't forget that. And then the flip side of this, um, we'll talk about more in depth in a second. Um, well, you know what? Actually, I'll save the San Francisco quarterback situation for just a minute uh, when we get to running backs. I think that's where it becomes a more valuable conversation. All right, I'll rattle off a couple of quick values here. The, one that's, the ones that everyone's looking at are Baker Mayfield and Andy Dalton. Um, Andy Dalton is really in a good spot here, obviously. So here you go. 51 and a half point total, which is... The second highest total on the board, and they're nearly a touchdown underdog, would indicate that Andy Dalton is going to be throwing the ball quite a bit. And let's actually look up some of Andy Dalton's game logs here so we can see what he's done. And here we go. He's been a solid value all three weeks, right? No worse than three times value in any week. Uh, 3.7 last week and nearly five times value in week two well worth his price. And now again, this week, he's what? $5,400, I think. Where are you, Andy? Yeah, 5,400 bucks right there. Um, so he's going to be interesting. And then also the other guy that I thought was interesting is Joe Flacco. And I'll show you why in a second here. So let's pull up his game logs. All right, here's Flacco, who scored has scored 21 23 and 15 draft kings points so last week against denver was his worst week thus far but he's been a really good value and now you get him stand by you get him here on sunday night against that pittsburgh off i'm sorry that pittsburgh defense that has allowed here we go the second most um fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks Tyrod Taylor, Patrick Mahomes, and Ryan Fitzpatrick have all hit, what is that, five, at least five times value. Mahomes went nuts. Uh, Fitzpatrick a little over five times value. So I think you could do much worse than Flacco down here at 5400 bucks if you're playing a fuller slate, especially to kind of pivot away from the Andy Dalton love. All right, let's look at running backs here and see where we're going this week. All right, just looking at, you know, trying to guess game flow here. So I've got this sorted by, you know, implied team total, teams that are expected to score the most points, obviously going to be your biggest favorites. So that brings into play as far as running back, running backs go, Kareem Hunt again, Melvin Gordon, who we've already talked about, and then whoever is the running back for the Atlanta Falcons. So this is kind of um, an interesting little spot because Devontae Freeman, still questionable, Tevin Coleman in there at $5,900. Freeman is $6,000. So DraftKings has them priced really in the same spot. Um, I'd probably only be interested if uh, Coleman, I'm sorry, if Freeman doesn't play and Coleman is the is the sole guy. But we'll, we'll wait and see how this shakes out for the rest of the week where, you know, if you can get one guy in this spot for under $6,000, uh, which I'm talking about Tevin Coleman, is, is really interesting. But I do think that just out of the top guys, it feels a little bit like a Saquon Barkley week. So let's pull up Barkley's game logs here real quick. And I'll search for him. Stand by. All right, here we go. Three weeks into the season. No worse than what's that? 23 DraftKings points in any game, right? He's been very, very consistent. 22, 23, and 24 DraftKings points. Well involved in the passing game, which is likely going to be necessary this week against the New Orleans Saints, right? We talked about that game. Vegas has this 
as a three and a half point game, a 50 point total, Saquon Barkley is going to be heavily involved in this. Actually, they are the first team. Let's see here. Yeah, they're the first team with the highest, they have the highest implied total that is an underdog. They're the first team. Or I'm sorry, I guess, I'm sorry, Denver is. Um, and then New York is second. So this feels like a really good spot for Barkley. And you know, you know, the you normally don't love playing running backs that are, you know, dogs in games, but it's a small dog. Um, they're at home. He's involved in all aspects of the game. It certainly feels like a Barkley week. And then you get Peyton Barber, who I actually want to look up real quick here, because Peyton Barber is right here. My second highest value. And I'm going to look at this with you for the first time. I've not looked this up yet. I want to look at the production shares for Tampa Bay. Yeah, here we go. Tampa Bay absolutely gives the ball to Peyton Barber and basically nobody else. So 43 carries for Peyton Barber, nine for Jaquiz Rogers, who is the next highest uh, total on the team. So it's the Peyton Barber show. Now we can argue whether he is actually a good running back or not, but we, we've talked about this before. Uh, if any positions are dependent on uh, volume, it is Peyton. Bar it is running back, and Peyton Barber fits the mold for that this week. Let's see what. Um, unfortunately, he's in a really bad matchup with Chicago. Who has Chicago faced? Uh, really nobody. So this might be a little bit deceiving. So we've talked about this a lot last year. Where if you go into the DraftKings lobby, um, there's a few things that drive ownership. Injury designation. So if you see a questionable tag next to somebody, the casual players tend to shy away from that instead of coming back Sunday morning and um, updating their lineups. And then also the opponent position rank. Okay, so Chicago has allowed the fewest points to opposing running backs. So they are number one in the DraftKings lobby. First of all, we're three weeks into the season. Doesn't really mean much. And also, it can be very deceptive. So if you're Chicago, who, you know, quite frankly, their, their defense is not a terrible defense. It's a good defense. But you get, look at, like, look at who, the, who they face. No one with a lead running back. Uh, Green Bay, Seattle, and of course, Arizona with David Johnson. But like, Arizona stinks. They can't run the ball. They can't figure out a way to use David Johnson effectively. Like, would it be that crazy uh, to just say that, Chicago could be good, but they're also benefiting from the fact that they face no, no one on the on the ground. Um, and Peyton Barber is the sole, uh, you know, workhorse for a team that might run the ball twenty times, and he's thirty eight hundred dollars. Like, is that that outrageous? I'm not. I'm not quite sure that it is. All right, now the running back that I wanted to mention earlier with San Francisco is actually related to their quarterback. So Jimmy G, unfortunately, out for the year. Uh, Tours ACL, and it's going to be C.J. Beathard who steps in. And this is such a good tweet. So this tweet's originally from Scott Barrett on Twitter. Um, he pointed out that no quarterback has targeted the running back position more fre frequently in the last decade than C.J. Beathard, 32% of the time, and he did it again this preseason where no quarterback targeted running backs more frequently this preseason than C.J. Beathard at 31%. He is like check down king, okay? So now there is only one running back in San Francisco that is going to catch passes. His name is not Alfred Morris. It is Matt Brita, and I'll pull up his game logs here just so you can see him. So he's been getting 10, 11 rushes each week. He is the more explosive back, the guy who is going to catch the ball out of the backfield. If Beathard is going to check down and take our, we're going to take our one point PPR um, as much as possible, right? If he gets six grabs here, he's already at basically one times, one times value. If he adds, you know, 60 yards, for example, like it's just, there's so many outs for Matt Breida to get to value this week that it's going to be hard to overlook. All right. As we transition into wide receivers, I want to show you this chart, which is just uh, how many targets. It's basically the target leaders, right? 
Um, I think a lot of these names are what we'd expect at the top, but I think there are a few surprises. Like the fact that Adam Thielen leads the league in targets after one week, or I'm sorry, after three weeks, 44 targets. Um, second is Antonio Brown and Michael Thomas. I think we could have expected that. Then you get Juju Smith-Schuster, who we thought would be a big part of the Pittsburgh offense, but maybe playing a much larger role than we originally expected. Then you get normal guys that we would expect, Landry, Golden Tate, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham. DeAndre Hopkins, but the next kind of tier of players I think is interesting. So you have Devontae Adams, who's probably like 12th or 13th on this list, tied with Quincy Inunua, and Robert Woods, all at 29 targets. I think those are interesting names because I don't think that we expected them to be there necessarily at this point in the season. And then I'm showing you the red zone targets now as well. And first of all, Alvin Kamara leads the league in red zone targets, which is absolutely insane. Uh, Juju second, Michael Thomas third. Actually, Cooper Cup shows up here. But then you get Devontae Adams again. So really, there's there's only a few guys, Juju, Michael Thomas, and Devontae Adams that show up on both of these lists. So not only are they being targeted in a big way, but they're being targeted in these high value situations like red zone targets. So Devonte Adams um, playing Buffalo this week at home. He's seventy eight hundred dollars. Let's see here: uh, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty DraftKings points in his three weeks this year. His quarterback is named Aaron Rodgers, which I am not an expert, but I think that's a good thing when you have him throwing you the football. So um, Devonte Adams continues to pop up, uh, you know, in almost every situation that I plug in here. So I'm imagining that I'll be gravitating to- gravitating towards him this week. All right, now if we go to the defenses chart and look at the defenses that have given up the most points to opposing wide receivers, it's similar to our quarterbacks list because that's how football works. So New Orleans, Tampa Bay, uh, one and two. Green Bay giving up a lot of points. I don't know who you would want to roster out of Buffalo, so probably be avoiding that. That LA, uh, the Chargers, and the Niners game, it it just seems prime for a lot of points being scored. And then here's an interesting one, Tennessee. Um, Tennessee is giving up the fifth most DraftKings points to opposing wide receivers. Um, And, you know, outside of DeAndre Hopkins, uh, you know, DeAndre Hopkins torched them, Will Fuller torched them, Kenny Stills torched them. I mean, there's just a lot of, uh, you know, like Kenny Stills is, like, I actually am a big fan of Kenny Stills, but he's like... Not great. So when he scores 30 DraftKings points on you, um, you got to be somewhat interested. So I, I think it's a it's a pretty good spot to rebound on Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia wide receivers, I should say. So we were down on Nelson Aguilar last week because we were trying to feel out the, um, uh, the Carson Wentz situation. We thought Zach Ertz was going to play a larger role. We didn't really love Jordan Matthews coming back into play. And we were correct. Um, you know, 6.4 DraftKings points. Now I, I'm just like, yeah, that was one week. We now we get another week of Carson Wentz. Um, Jordan Matthews uh, is kind of eating up the slot more than I would have liked. I'd, I'd like to see Aguilar there, but I, I think that Doug Peterson can make a lot of adjustments. Um, now you're going to get Aguilar, who last week everyone loved, right? Um, now you're going to get him at like single-digit ownership. So I don't mind buying back in here. I, I think it's a decent spot. You know, when there's when there's blood on the streets buy property, which is essentially what we're trying to do uh, in Philadelphia right now. If AJ Green does not suit up this week for Cincinnati, Tyler Boyd is going to be very, very popular. He's going to be the chalk of the week. And I'm not sure that that's wrong. Uh, He was heavily involved in this offense in week two with AJ Green in the lineup. He scored 21 DraftKings points, nearly uh, seven times value, found the end zone. Then last week after A.J. Green goes down, he kind of goes nuts, right? 132 yards and a touchdown, 28 fantasy points. Let's check on his price tag this week because he's jumped pretty drastically, $4,600 from $3,700. But it is at Atlanta, which we saw is a good place for just about everyone to play. So uh, there's good chalk and there's bad chalk. If uh, A.J. Green does not suit up, I think that Tyler Boyd is good chalk. He's going to be tough to avoid. And let's wrap this up with tight ends here and see what's going on. Oh, real real quick. Um, so I'm going to talk about David Njoku just for a quick second, but I, I do want to point this out. So um, I'm just going to show you week three for the Cleveland Browns and basically look at their target shares. Now, this is not all 
Baker Mayfield. Um, this is partly Tyrod Taylor as well. But the fact that Baker's playing, um, I'm not sure what his extre- you know, his value is, but I think it helps everybody else, right? Um, much more decisive. I think his range of outcomes is much larger than Tyrod Taylor's is. Uh, so he's going to have really, really bad weeks. He's going to have really, really good weeks. I think it's good for Jarvis Landry. We saw 15 targets last week. Again, not all from Mayfield, but the vast majority. Um, I think Antonio Callaway becomes an interesting option. And I think David Njoku is now kind of revived a little bit. He was he was dead. We talked about him I probably week one where a uh, really athletic player who I, I, I buy into more long term. Um, and I think he's better off with uh, with Baker Mayfield under center than, than Tyrod Taylor. So just to kind of throw that out there before we dive in too much into uh, tight ends here. Now let's look at these tight end targets and, um, Zach Ertz really cementing himself as, you know, probably the top, um, tight end on the slate at this point, you know, just so many more targets than the rest of these guys, 33 targets compared to, you know, Travis Kelsey's 26 is next. Um, Gronk has been uh, a huge disappointment, obviously only 17 targets to this point, but, there's a few guys in the middle here. So still pretty high on Ebron. George Kittle, we need to talk about. Okay, so George Kittle, we talked about week one. I was very, or I probably week two, because he was five of 90 in week one, and he left a lot of points out there. Still left a lot of points out there last week. Like one, He's going to be in a millionaire maker winning lineup at some point, because he's going to hit this ceiling. Like so everything's going to go right for him one week, and he's, and he's going to legit be the number one tight end. He's going to win everybody a million bucks. Um, $4,200 this week. Seven targets last week, um, 14 DraftKings points. So still has not found the end zone yet. There is a connection between him and CJ Beathard, who they both played at Iowa. Uh, Kittle looked good in what the five games that Beathard played last year. So I, I still think there's something here. Uh, again, I think that San Francisco LA game is going to be a high scoring event. So um, I, I'm still bullish on Kittle at this point. You know, also still really bullish on Eric Ebron, who with his, uh, what do you have, 11 targets last week? Let me see if I can find this. I think this is worth it. Eric Ebron, I believe, did about as little as you could have possibly done with 11 targets last week. Here he is. Yeah, all right. 11 targets, five receptions, 33 yards, eight DraftKings points. Uh, that's about as bad as you can do. Uh, if you give anybody in the league 11 targets, they're going to score you more than eight, eight fantasy points. Um, he is still priced to move at 3,600 this week. If Jack Doyle doesn't suit up, I think you're going to continue to get 10, 11 targets from Eric Ebron. He dropped one in the end zone, so that hurt. Um, but this is such a good value. Like, like I don't know who else you're going to find that's got 20 targets this year. Actually, I can tell you exactly who you're going to find who has 20 targets this year. Uh, Zach Ertz, Travis Kelsey, Jared Cook, George Kittle, Jordan Reed. End of list. Uh, Eric, Eric Ebron, the cheapest out of any of those guys uh, by at least 500 bucks. And if Jack Doyle sits again, I mean, there might only be two or three guys on this slate for tight ends that see 11 targets. So you're going to have to play him. Um, there you go. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you, what you want to talk about for this week. Tweet me. It's at DFS On Demand or leave a comment below. Good luck.